Hello and happy first day of spring fling a ween. If you're not familiar, this is a readathon that's hosted by Gabby at Gabby Reads and Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. It's taking place from today, the 27th of April till the 30th of April, so it's like a mini week readathon. I will link both of their announcement videos down below, but there are a couple prompts for the week one of which is to read a book with pink or yellow on the cover because that's kind of the theme with their merch and got my little butterfly clips to match. But the second prompt is to read a backlist horror book, which I have quite a few options, not sure which one I'm gonna choose first. And then the third prompt, which is to bake some kind of fall themed snack. We're not gonna do that one today. I think I'm gonna save it for another day. Today's focus is going to be on the first prompt, and the book that I'm choosing is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica, and this is a translated work that is originally from Argentina, and it follows a society in the future where we can no longer consume animal meat, so we have turned to cannibalism, and it's supposed to be super gory and super dark, and my friend Alex actually read this one and has been basically begging me to pick it up since she read it. So I'm excited to pick it up. It's not too long, so I think this is going to be perfect for this readathon. Yeah, that's kind of just the update. I wanted to say hello and say I'm excited. Also, so Emmett is like not a horror fan. He does not like anything scary at all. So I was able to make a deal with him where he will basically consume horror media only if it's during a horror readathon. So I'm thrilled because I actually just finished reading The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson and I loved this book. I did not think I would. It was so funny, the characters and their banter. It did have its spooky moments, though I'm not, it wasn't mind-blowingly scary, but we as a society in general are just so desensitized to horror that a classic will never meet our expectations of being scary because it's like, they couldn't imagine the kind of shit we see now. So I think I want to re-watch the television show. I've already watched it before. I think though that re-watching it after reading it is going to be super fun and then Emmett never watched it the first time so I'm going to make him watch it with me. So yeah that is the plan for today. Today is definitely going to be a chill hangout at home, maybe even read the entirety of this one within the first day. That would be a really great way to kick it off but I'm not going to pressure myself to read through this one. I'm going to take my time with it, enjoy it for what it is. So yeah, we've got a lot of expectations for today. Hopefully they don't steer us wrong. And I will check in with you guys once I've made any kind of progress on anything. Hello, so I am about 40 pages into Tenders of Flesh and it's not really giving me the like shook vibes that I was having before. It's more just intellectually stimulating like it's really making me think about things it's less like horrific as of yet I'm, I'm sure there's more to come but it's more just making me question how society reacted to the legalizing of cannibalism and it's doing a really great job though of providing information without being too info dumpy there's a little bit of like over explaining stuff but for a concept like this, it I think it works well. It's not like it's doing too much. I know that Olivia was talking about how she was reminded of um, Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal when she was reading this. It has, it has to have clearly been inspired by that. If you don't know Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal is like a classic essay story that he wrote where he was essentially arguing that it was a satirical piece, but he was arguing that in order to help poor people and help the economy, we should fatten up poor people's babies and then feed them to the rich. So this is kind of taking its own play on that, but everyone is up for consumption and it's really effective. And I think it's interesting too that in these first pages, we don't know 
what disease was claimed to have been had by the animals. Even when he's, like, talking about it, he's, like, the unknown, or he was, like, the disease called such and such. Like, nobody really knew what it was, and a bunch of different researchers were, like, coming back with different information. So it's kind of making you wonder, too, like, how real was this illness? How Could it have been just created by the people above? Uh, yeah, that's like a lot of my thoughts right now is it's just a very interesting societal observation more than just a classic horror, which I'm really appreciating. I look forward to how it's going to blur the lines even more as I continue reading it. Also, I'm kind of peeved that my hair looks like much better now, even though I already filmed the intro clip and I'm not going to go back and refilm it because now I'm already reading this. So now I'm just going to be peeved. <laughs> the way that I'm already gasping. <laughs> I've started tabbing. So I went with the yellow so we could have the yellow and pink moment. And yeah, I'm shook. So Charmed and I are hanging out outside on the patio now. And I'm making some more progress in Tender's Flesh. I... I'm enjoying it. I'm not head over heels quite yet, which I'm a little disappointed by. Uh, nothing really because of the book though, like what it's accomplishing, I think it's doing really well. I do think that we're not having enough conversation about who was taken and forced into breeding. Like they mention how it was like immigrants and lower income, but I'm not really seeing the ramifications from that. Um, there's still quite a bit to go, so I don't know if that discussion will become more prevalent. I, though I do wish the author had taken a step further and talked about that a little more, so far at least. I also did have a couple parts because it's interesting where uh, the main character even talks about how certain movies with animals and certain animal imagery is like completely prohibited. They cannot talk about it anymore. And I believe this does take place in Argentina. I'm not sure. And I am undereducated in a lot of other countries' cultures. But as someone who has always been raised in America, born and raised here, I just wonder how Americans would handle this. Uh, especially with the idea of like things getting prohibited because I just feel like we would throw a fit. Not saying that there wasn't fits here, it just hasn't been mentioned that there was anybody really fighting back these regulations. And I mean, in a little bit it mentions how vegans were upset, but then they basically told vegans that they were wrong. But I just feel like us Americans would go nuts. Like it almost might, it might be worse. It might be like the complete destruction of America because we wouldn't be able to like make any decisions and it would just be like full out war. But yeah, that's just an interesting little tidbit that I'm thinking about while I'm reading as well. It's just like how the people in my life and my family and my culture, society, just how, how they would react. And it's, it's thought provoking for sure. Also, there's some kids that are playing outside, which is like, you know, super cute, have fun. But like hearing them have fun while I'm reading about people being brutally murdered, it's just, it's, it's, it's an experience. It is an experience. So another thing that I'm finding really interesting about the story as well is we do get more story about Marco's like life and of course his just like normal problems that many people and many couples and many experience that doesn't even have anything to do with the cannibalism going around him. It just like really just puts in perspective just the disconnect that a lot of people have from what they're eating. It's just really, it's really interesting. I just, I was talking to Emmett about it and I feel like this book is going less horror. It's definitely not scaring me or anything yet. I'm not even really disgusted as much yet. There's been one moment where I was like, Ugh, that was when I was shook before. But it's really just much more political and reflective and thought provoking. But I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm definitely obsessed with the story and I'm reading it so quickly. So I will get back to it. So ignore a bit of the cooking mess, but I've made a delicious chicken Caesar salad and Emmett, what are you doing Emmett? <laughs> I'm waiting for official clock. 
That was it. That was the entire line. He's cooking salmon. <laughs> I kind of thought that it was only going to be... I don't know why I thought this, but I guess I just kind of assumed it would only be, like, cattle and pigs and stuff that had this virus. Virus. But him talking right now about the dogs i couldn't i couldn't he was talking about how some people like couldn't get rid of their dogs and so they like either died as well or like just couldn't you know handle everything and i just i don't think i could i couldn't kill Charmin, but i also couldn't leave him to be taken by sadistic people and tortured and i'm just it's a very scary thing to think about time this is my last checkup i've got that little chunk left to read and we're gonna get started on it i'm not going to stress to get this posted and uploaded today i'm just gonna post it like the day after every day so readathon will end sunday but i'll post it the last video on monday just so i can really like give you guys more to watch because like emmett and i aren't even watching Haunting of Hill House until super late at night, but that is still happening. He's not excited, and I am. <laughs> That'll be a nice little let's go to bed time, but I'm enjoying where this is going. It's definitely taking an interesting turn, and yeah, I really don't know. I just keep hearing that this ending is going to be explosive, so maybe I'll even try and record myself reading the last bit and see what happens. Don't get me wrong, it was good, but I don't think that ending was as mind-blowing as everyone thinks it was. I'm a little underwhelmed. That's not good. I think my expectations were a little too high. I think, hmm, it's definitely hovering at like a 4, 4.55. It's somewhere in that range, but I think I need to sit on this one for a little bit. But it makes sense. I will say I kind of thought that maybe something like that would happen. Mm. I'm having a lot of emotions, if you can't tell. I need some time. <laughs> Hello and good morning. I'm just jumping on to wrap up yesterday's vlog. Oh, we just fell asleep after watching Hill House. Oh, hi, Charmy. Good morning. So, today... Oh, Charmy. <laughs> today, I'm going to be reading Pet Cemetery. So... Stay tuned for tomorrow's video if you're interested in watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.